Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Got a great show lineup. Got a special guest here. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Tactical Center at the corner of Baldwin, Highway 77. High today, 90. Low 76, and water temperature is right at 90 degrees. It has been warm the last two weeks in the Gulf of Mexico. Let's take a look at our river regions brought to us by Sand Hill Seafood and Restaurant up on Highway 77 just past Bozeman School. Looking at Apalachicola at Bluntstown of 4.3. You've got a very slow drop to it. It's been like this all week. That really steady drop. Not much uh, movement like we've been talking about all week, but the Looking at the Choctaw Care Field, is at an even five foot. It's just level out of uh, in both rivers. We talked about it, just not a lot of activity as far as dropping or rising up. So it's going to be a good weekend on the river if you just like some steady water. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. Neap tides. We just don't have any tidal flow, we don't have any river flow. So the next couple of days, and it's going to be hot. So if you, if you catch a lot of fish now in this next couple of days, you're a good fisherman, I can promise you. The uh, tide's going to be high at 1225, right around noon and low at 730. But today you're looking at August the 24th and not much happening today, tomorrow, or Saturday, or Sunday. Not going to get back into good tides until about Tuesday of next week. Marine forecast, a uh, good little forecast there in the north, northwest at about 5 to 10. Take a break. We'll be right back with our guest. Welcome back, and welcome to a familiar face here on Panhandle Outdoor, Travis Basper. Good morning. Officer Travis Basper, glad to have you. Glad We've been be running our mouth. We've we, uh, been talking about all kinds of stuff. We've already caught three or four fish sitting here. Yeah, we? I think we have. <laughs> well, we haven't seen each other months trying to catch up with all the stuff that's been going on. It's been an active month. It has, it has, and finishing up with fishing and mm -hmm. going to start transitioning into hunting in the woods and stuff like that. That's right around the corner. I know. It's hard to get in that mood with the uh, heat like it is, but oh. it's not that far away. It's been hot, and I know people are starting to put trail cameras out, and, mm -hmm. you know, the deer are, uh, they've all got their racks now, so yep. everyone's getting excited. That's for sure. All right, so what all you guys got? A lot of notes today. Yeah, well, he's got, got <laughs> stuff laid out here. Um, well, hunting season's actually already started for alligators, so we'll start mm -hmm. off with that. and. Um, not going to get into all the fine details of it, but it did start on August 15th. That was our first phase. We've got different phases uh, with our alligator hunting. We've been doing it this way uh, since the 80s, and it's um, respected around the nation. It, it is very, very highly regulated um, with the CITES tags and our methods of take here in Florida. It's different from some other states, but um, um, a lot of people come from all over to Florida mm -hmm. to hunt a big alligator, mm -hmm. and, um, and a lot of local you know, Floridians like to do it as well. So um, there's been some people going this first phase um, and what I want to remind everyone, um, just a few little things on alligator hunting. Make sure you hunt your phase if you're a permit holder, um, your correct area, which could be a county, like for instance here in Bay County, it's the entire county. It's all your public water here. A lot of people like to go alligator hunting on the bay. And uh, over the past several years, we've seen some of the biggest gators yeah. come from the bay. They go up in the bayous and the creeks and and little fingers and stuff like that and uh, that's where they're getting them. Deer Point Lake's obviously another one um, and then some of the ponds up in the sand hills as you get up into Washington and all but just know your area um, and then sometimes it's a body of water so some of our bigger bodies of water like Lake Seminole up in Jackson County mm -hmm. um, get over toward Tallahassee Lake Talcan you've got the river systems on um, Choctahatchee and Apalachicola so just make sure you hunt your, your correct phase, your correct area, and then use the correct harvest harvest method. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't swamp people. You can't go out there and shoot <laughs> yeah. them with a 22 <laughs> rifle. Um, we've got certain rules and regulations. You can snatch hook them. You can shoot them with a crossbow. Um, there's a wooden peg you can use if you want to have a baited line. Um, and, uh, and then the only firearm that's allowed to use is a bang stick, which you can go online and research that. And mm -hmm. that's something where you actually have to get the alligator uh, really close to your boat or up on the hill mm -hmm. uh, to hit them with that bang stick. So just important things and a great resource. Um, again, you know, I refer to our website all the time, but myfwc.com hunting. And then there's actually a 2017 guide to alligator hunting in Florida. Mm -hmm. Um, I was looking at it the other day, just uh, clicking around, and it's a great resource. It's like an 18-page document. It's got FAQs. It's got everything you want to know about alligator hunting because it is 
highly regulated mm -hmm. with the harvest methods, the phases, the areas, um, and it's just a good resource there online. Yeah, and anyway, we got a bunch of them. We do, yeah, we and do. I guess you see them when you're out. Somewhere. Yeah, they're, they're bringing some in. Um, you know, it, it's been a little slow, but usually mm -hmm. it seems like the later phases, people get them figured out, and, uh, and, and that's when we see the big ones come in yeah. anyway, so. Um, but anyway, so alligator hunting, hunting's already started, and then just moving in before I see y'all again and before I come on the show again, we'll have uh, early wood duck season coming in, early wood duck and teal, uh, September 16th through the 20th, that's wood duck and teal. An important thing on that to remember is only two wood ducks, not three like you get in the regular season. And uh, of course you can have uh, four teal, but um, only two wood ducks. And then the last part of that season, which is the 21st through the 24th, is teal only and teal are easily distinguished from a wood duck because of the sky blue patches on their wings. They're about half the size of a wood duck yeah. and it's the hunter's responsibility to know. Um, another thing about teal, you know, up here in the panhandle, um, you know, it's really our only opportunity to hunt, for the most part, blue winged teal because mm -hmm. they're the first duck that leaves. That's right. They're the least tolerant to cold. And if you don't hunt them during the September season here in the Panhandle, they're usually well south of us. Most of them winter in South Florida. They some of them go to the Caribbean, some of them go to Central America. Um, when I did, when I worked in Palm Beach County, I hunted some of those stormwater treatment areas down there. And yeah. you want to talk about blue winged teal? I mean, it was a lot of them. When they got up in the morning, they just black out the sun. Wow. It was insane. I mean, thousands yeah. and thousands. And uh, that's where they winter a lot is south of us because it's warmer down there and stuff like that. But if you want to hunt them up here in the Panhandle, that's the time to do it. And it's always hit or miss too, because it depends if we get that first cool front mm -hmm. to push them down, we'll have some teal. If not, the wood ducks are consistent. They're yep. usually our local birds and people know what ponds are in and where they're, where they're flying. But uh, the teal are always hit or miss. I mean, it, it, it's, it's amazing to me how you'll hunt a pond, you're hunting for wood ducks. There's nothing there as far as teal. And the next day, you know, a flock of 50 oh, wow. come right in. So. Um, that'll be exciting too, and that'll get duck season started off um, here in the Panhandle. And then the last thing coming up too, before I come on here again, we've got dove season. I've been seeing some, uh, 388, Highway 20, some of those clear cuts along the roads. I've mm -hmm. been seeing some, hoping we have a better season, but that'll be opening phase one, September 23rd. Um, again, okay. the early, it's about the third year they've opened it early. Always growing up, it was the first Saturday in October. Always, yeah. And uh, they've opened it early. Um, we've had some, some down years up at our place. Um, I was actually up at the farm yesterday up in Jackson County and we got plenty of peanuts. So uh, there's plenty of food if they come down, but the last few years it's been really slow up there. Um, I don't know, what have you been hearing on that? I, I haven't heard much yet. I, I, we're right around the corner from here in a lot. And, uh, yep. By the next week or two, we'll start getting some reports, I think. I think so. So that'll be exciting. And then phase one, always remember, um, it's noon to sunset. You're shooting hours. Mm -hmm. The rest of the season, you can hunt that um, half hour before sunrise to sunset. And they're leaving the bag limit at 15 doves per person. Well, that's good. That's good. Okay, yep. we're going to take a quick break. Be right back with Travis. Okay, welcome back. So, you know, Travis, uh, Travis, what else is going on? Well, we've got uh, also finishing up on hunting. You know, that's the most exciting time of year for me. I always talk about it, hunting and, and college football. <laughs> we got it coming up. So, it's a great uh, time of year. It is, and we got a little bit longer, but we'll go ahead and start talking about it now because before hunting season starts, we've got some hunter safety courses coming up. Um, you can go online and look at these. I'm going to mention a couple of the local ones here for our area. Um, we've got two kinds of hunter safety courses. The traditional course, which is um, a two-day course. You come, you do a classroom okay. portion, you take an exam, and then the next day is a uh, hands-on fields day, uh, a field day when you actually go out there and you get to shoot. They've got a shotgun, I believe. they got some bow and arrows, and sometimes they've got 22s. Um, and it gives people, kids, new hunters, it gives them that hands-on experience. You know, I was blessed growing up with my dad. He, ex he exposed me to firearms and hunting at a very young age, firearm safety, yeah. and uh, feel very fortunate that you know he was able to do that, but not everyone has that, so it gives them that um, hands-on stuff. But anyways, so here in Bay County, uh, September 9th and September 10th, uh, Saturday, Sunday, up at the Bay County Shooting Range, that's a traditional course, um, and that's a good way, if you do it September 9th and 10th, you're covered for all hunting season, and you're good to go. Now we'll have some more during the season, but that way you're covered and get it out of the way. Um, up in Jackson County in Mariana now on September 9th as well, that'll be the internet 
students. And what a lot of people do now is you take the course online, mm -hmm. okay, there's, there's a course and exam, and then you show up and do the field today in person. And that'll be up in Mariana September 9th as well. One in Gulf County and Weewa, same date, September 9th, and then also September 9th, uh, Washington County and Shipley. Um, now the exact locations in those towns, um, go online or call our regional yeah. office and you can get those, but those are all the internet students. So the only traditional course we got coming up here locally is that one in Bay County um, at the shooting range up okay. there off uh, Steelfield Steel Road. Good so. stuff. Yep. Okay. So that, that, I mean, that's a good thing to have if you can get it before the season, that way you can take advantage of the whole hunting season, you know. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have some more coming up, but that's before everything starts really. And that's so important too. You can't you understand people, kids. Like I say, a lot of kids don't learn from their parents anymore. You're exactly right. And, and they, they got to, they got to learn it that way. I, they I, do. I, I mean, that's a great thing about outdoor ed. You get to expose so many. Yeah. They have exposed so many kids to that over the years that, you know, might not have got it from their parents. And uh, and they love the outdoors and they love doing it, but they just haven't had that that upbringing. So, it's it's a good thing, and it's required too. If you want to. Yeah, to do it. Right you need yeah. to do it to yeah. to have it if you're born after uh, 1975. Driving them a couple weeks ago on the show, where I, when school was starting about two weeks ago, I I, I gave an ultimatum. That I said all schools should have outdoor ed. I, and I really uh, I agree. firmly believe in that. I know you guys uh, agree too on your end. Absolutely. Just, just get exposed to this uh, cast net, and we got we got mother season coming up pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, yep, we have. Have you seen anybody out throwing much? I've seen just the, the few guys that are going to do it year round, but I've seen some start to start to stack up a little uh -huh. bit. It's early, but I was out actually at uh, Lake Powell the other day, and that cut's open over there, mm -hmm. and there were quite a few mullet right there in that cut. Okay. Yeah, and people, they were getting some to go offshore, but um, yeah, it'll it'll be here too before you know it. Yeah. Yep. Have you had, uh, had a chance to do any much fishing yourself? No, my boat's been in the shop, and I've been. <laughs> you heard that before. <laughs> I've been working. Yeah, it's been in there over a month, and uh, I've been working and and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I'm gonna. We're supposed to be out of here. I'm uh, supposed to be out of here pretty soon, and I'm gonna try to get a couple more trips in, and then it'll be all hunting after that. I'm sure. So. Okay, I want to. I got an announcement. I'm gonna show this poster real quick. I was asked to do this, and I'm glad I had opportunity to do this. We've got a fish fry this coming Saturday. Up here in Southport, it's going to be to benefit Bill Davis. And Mr. Davis, a lot of folks know Bill Davis and know his family. He's a good out. He's just, first of all, a good man. Uh, on the bottom there, Bill's health has gone down. He's restricted a wheelchair now. Well, family, friends, and the community want to do our part to help help my friend get back in good health and prayers and support. So that fish fry is going to be at a Southport ballpark at 10:30. Until the fish is gone. There you go. <laughs> so you better get there early. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to a fish fry at South Park, Southport Ballpark, but they, they fry some good fish now. I guarantee this, this you fish they not will. Come, this is not tilapia coming in from New England. This, this is going to be some good fish. Yeah, it will. And it's going to be for such a good cause, a good family, a good man there. And uh, folks in, in our communities are really good about helping out on stuff like this. And, and you That's benefit great. by having good fresh fish too. So uh, TJ and all, all the family wish all the very best on that. I, I'm gonna have to take a rain check. I'm gonna be fishing at Mexico Beach. Oh, that's tournament right. You got another tournament coming up. If not, I would be there. I promise you, I'd be there. So, uh, if, if I get back in, y'all got some leftovers. Y'all call me. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be good fish. Uh, I've been up there on a few fish fries. I used to call. Good. I used to umpire. Did up you there. really? Yeah, I didn't know that. at Southport. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they'd all they'd have stuff like that going on all the time. So. Yeah. That's that, a good community up there. That is a good community. A lot of outdoor people up there, and they really know how to how to cook the fish and, and catch the fish too. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're gonna take our final break. Come back with our case of the month. Okay. Welcome back. Let's look at our fishing game times for today. If you're going outdoors, looking at 2:51 to 4:51 this morning. We just passed that, but this afternoon now, 3:15 to 5:15 looks like a good time. A good some a little bit of water movement there, and watch out for these thunderstorms. I guess you. You see these thunderstorms pop up on y'all too, don't they? They do. They, I mean, this time of year, it yeah. seems like they can they can pop up like that, and uh, you just got to watch for them. I got that app on my phone, and we'll run around them if we can, or sometimes we just got to run in. It just depends on how big the storm is. <laughs> Real, I know it, it, that helps a lot. Have that app, and uh, we got. I told you about the one we got caught in. That was a bad one. Yeah. One more quick picture here. You know, we'll give away this red snapper and twenty dollar gift certificate and. Sandhill Seafood Platter every Friday. Mark Calhoun sent this to me. Let's read it right here. Hey, my wife picked up her red snapper today at Tarpon Dock Seafood and now claims to be a better fisherman. 
Also, I put on Facebook under my name. Actually, if you take a look at this, look at that big old bag of fish there. But look, she took it home. Look at the size of that slab. Wow. Mark, uh, you know, you got the proof is in the pudding. She brought she brought fish home, and there it is right there in the pot. So she must be a better fisherman right there. So <laughs> <laughs> good job. Appreciate Trafford Rock, and thank you for acknowledging that, Mark Calhoun. Okay, what we got here? All right, so we got a couple more things here. Um, we'll uh, we'll talk about uh, the reef fishery a little bit. Let's see, we got dr great trigger fish season. Um, they did open one for state waters in the fall, um, and we now have the date, so um, I'm gonna share that with y'all, and that's gonna be state waters only. Uh, it's a great trigger fish uh, fall harvest, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be September 1st through the 4th, get Labor Day weekend covered, um, the 9th and 10th, October 7th and 8th, the f October 14th and 15th. So that'll be your great trigger fish um, open dates for this year and I know a lot of people were disappointed that trigger wasn't open when snapper was open yeah. and all in the summertime I heard a lot of people saying hey we're catching big triggers oh, but yeah. um so FWC is trying to to allow some harvest here in the mm -hmm. fall and uh, we've got some encouraging news also on the federal front it is scheduled to reopen January 1st 2018 to federal harvest and in the state That's I believe will follow that because um, a lot of people that when they were Snapper fishing in federal waters, yeah. they were catching big triggers. Yeah, and really we big were, triggers. and uh, you know, there, there's a reason for that, and, and I'm glad we made that adjustment and we can catch them now. That's really good. Right, and, and that's what it's all about. I mean, the, these, these regulations change all the time, and um, you know, we're trying to benefit the resource and then also the people at the same time. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's a balancing act. But They're not making this stuff up either. These biologists, they study this stuff too. And, and you know, one area you know, some don't have them, one area may have them. So, you know, it's a, it's yep. tough, it's a tough call. It is, it is. But I'm glad they're doing it. And I think people will be excited about it. And the cool thing is that September, the, that Labor Day weekend, you can catch Trigger and Snapper there because yeah, so. Red Snapper will be open that Labor Day weekend still. Um, so that's encouraging there. And then we've got a new regulation here. Before we do a uh, case of the month, uh, hogfish. Now, we don't see too many up here. Uh, sometimes the divers will get them. If you go to the middle ground, you hear about people getting them. They're doing a, a, a change on it, and it's taking effect August 24th is the change. So um, it's going to be in the Gulf sector. Now, they made a lot of changes in the Atlantic, but as far as the Gulf it pertains to us, um, they're increasing the size limit from 12 to 14 inches okay. on hogfish. Good. Now, they did a lot of stuff over there in the Atlantic. They've actually put a season. They've reduced bag limits. But um, for, our, for, for the Gulf now, it's going to be up to 14, 14 inches. inches. So that's important to know. All okay. right, so you ready for this case of the case month? Case of the month. Here we go. All right, I want to recognize Keelan, uh, Officer Keelan also Brooks again. Um, he does a great job for us here in Bay County. We talked about him last month. He's making some really good resource cases out there. Now, this one's actually in Gulf County. Um, around Howard's Creek, which you're very familiar with. Yep. And uh, Keelan was uh, on patrol and he received a tip about some individuals that were possibly poaching gators over around Howard's Creek. So um, he went over to the area, found their truck and trailer, and they were actually out on the water still from that uh, night before. He went over there that morning and, and found their stuff. And from a concealed location, he, he sat on the truck and trailer. And when the individuals returned, um, he conducted a resource stop, and um, there was some evidence there that, that you know, some gators had been killed. Well, after some interviews and a, and a thorough investigation, um, nine alligators were, were located. How many? Nine. Yeah, they, 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 they got a little early start. This was before alligator season actually started. Oh, and uh, so uh, nine gators out of season, several individuals, um, a lot of citations uh. issued, um, you know, illegal method. and. Um, harvesting before season, and, and there was just a lot of different things that were going on. So, um, but that was a great job by Keelan. He got the information, he worked it, and uh, was able to get over there on those guys and, and catch them. So, that was a great uh, case well, by Keelan over uh, in Gulf County, okay, Howard's Creek. Howard area. Creek. And Randy Burleson, I told you not to be doing that, but I know uh, <laughs> but Randy gets to watch the show. Of course, he was the state attorney's office at one time. You remember Randy? I think it was. Oh, yeah. Office, oh, so. yeah. I, I, I know uh, Randy. Uh, anyway, uh, you got you to gotta obey the law. You do, and uh, good, again, it was a good job there by Keelan to, to get these guys because um, it was kind of a time thing. You know, he, he received the information and 
was able to get over there and get on them before they were able to uh, to pack up and get out of there. So and we're going to be right around the corner. We'll probably have some dove field citations, and we'll probably have some more night hunting coming up pretty soon when the weather cools off a little bit. Yeah, they've started that already, and um, so we're we're working that a uh, little bit um, actually already. And and you know it just seemed it, it's amazing how um, how quick they get started on that, but. Yeah, we're going to be making that transition, and, and we're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to some cooler weather. I think we've got about another month of that. But, but anyways, um, it, it's going to be good. And then, yeah, like you say, the bird season's coming up. Yeah. Um, I hope we get a – you know, we had a pretty wet summer. We had a real wet summer. And we last did. time we had this much rain, we had a real good winter. So yes, I'm hoping, you know, we get that. It'll push uh, not only the doves, it'll push some ducks down mm -hmm. for us. I know y'all are going to, I know that Labor Day weekend with, with Snapper open and Trigger, and they're all going to have a busy w Labor Day weekend. It will. That'll be our last hurrah for the summer. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, Snapper and the boating and, and everything else going on. Alligator will be going on mm -hmm. still. So it, it will be busy. That usually the last, usually wraps up summer there for us. So um, that'll be a busy one. Okay. What, uh, like I say, dove season's coming up. And then, uh, you know, we talked about uh, teal. A lot of times teal is hard to recognize if you haven't hunted before, but really, to me, I always thought it looked like a quail on jet. You know what I mean? <laughs> they <laughs> do. They're, they're smaller than a wood duck, and they, but they can fly fast. They can, and uh, they're a challenge to shoot. Uh, we, that was yeah. what we targeted when we hunted down south, and uh, they're fun. I mean, they, they dip and dive and, and do their thing. And real quick, too, Canada goose. Is this still, they're still up there like Seminole like they used to be? They, yes, they, they still, yes, and there, right. there's going to be a season on them too, okay. and it's in September. Um, yeah. I don't have the dates in I front of me. I get it for everybody, but uh, that, that's a, there are a lot of geese up there. Yeah, and I've actually, I talked to a uh, another game warden friend of mine, and he said they went up there and did it one year, and they got some. I mean, they, they're up there. Yeah. Um, now, how to hunt them and all, I have no idea. I mean, I don't know if you pattern them like you do ducks, I would imagine, but... Um, yeah. But anyways, that's a big bird. I know it's a big that. Bird, a lot of meat and all. And people used to pay money to go up on goose hunts and all. But now, you know, you know, they they've acclimated so well to this area. They have, and you'll see them around Tallahassee too. Not yeah. only on Seminole, but you'll see them on golf courses and stuff like that over there. Yeah. All yeah. right, we've got to wrap it up, Travis. Always, thank you so much for. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Good information and all, and I know you uh, you got your hands full at, at work and all. That. And that little baby's growing, isn't she? She is. She's walking around and getting into everything. <laughs> so. Okay, folks, I always appreciate you watching Panhandle Outdoors. Always do something for your neighbor or your good friend or whoever's in need. And you have a great day, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.